Welcome to the summit, Being No More, No Less, The Mind at Rest. And I now have the pleasure to introduce you to Jack O'Keefe. Welcome, Jack. Hello, Susan. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the summit. <laughs> and um, you're a spiritual teacher and you've also written some books. And I actually have read one of your books, Born to be Free. And it's about who you are. You're already free. And the freedom you're looking for is from where you're looking. And you also have another book, uh, How to Be a Rebel or Spiritual Rebel. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about that today. And then you're also a founding member of the Association for Spiritual Integrity. And uh, maybe you can start off just speaking briefly about what, what that is. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'd love to. Thanks for the opportunity, Susan. The Association for Spiritual Integrity. This came from a few of us spiritual leaders, influencers, teachers, wanting to do better, wanting to not contribute to the amount of abuse that has happened, emotional abuse, sexual, psychological abuse that has happened within the spiritual communities from teachers to students. And so what we're looking at is the culture that's made it possible for spiritual leadership to be patriarchal, to be authoritarian, to be um, a, a power abuse of where the student, it's all about me, it's all my ego and the teacher is infallible. This was of its time, it's not true at all. And so we are a group of spiritual leaders and teachers who want to be accountable, who want to continue working on our humanness, who want to learn how to work in a do no harm way, who want to introduce, you know, beingness into every part of our lives, our teachings, as well as our personal lives, into our relationship with money, into our relationships with friends. How does all of that play out if we are in, in integrity, if we're walking our talk? And I think that's why I love also conferences such as like this, where, yes, we can tap into beingness. Each of us knows that that inner stillness. And we know the mind is the interface with the world. How, how do we bring that stillness into the world? When your kids are screaming, when you can't pay the rent, what happens there? How influential is your beingness in life? And it's the same for spiritual teachers. And the patriarchal system that we've had forever, it's like, if you don't look like one of those male teachers, well then awakening is not for you. And I want to rip that apart, okay. tear it to pieces, you know, and let's do it differently. So that's what the ASI is about. And that's a lot of what my own approach is about, is like, yes, we can awaken, but we're no longer in monasteries. We're no longer in robes and detached from the world and abstaining from anything that might distract us. How does beingness do sex? How does beingness do conflict how does beingness you know deal with homelessness like how do we do that mm -hmm. with 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 gender diversity how does beingness do that and this is where i think spirituality could be further discussed explored but it's in the human realm it is the realm of of um what we recognize as illusion, what we recognize as created by mind, but that's no reason to dismiss it. That's a reason to bring the beingness. It's the human beingness. Human is in there. Human is there in the beingness. Pure consciousness itself, outside of all of it, it ain't doing being. Yeah. It's not, it's deeper than being. Mm -hmm. So the beingness, the beingness is how we show up. How do we do this? Pick up the mind, set down the mind and not dismiss anything that is created by mind. So it's very simple and it's darn complex sometimes, you know? So yeah. that's yeah. the fun of the journey. That's a very long convoluted roundabout answer, but. Yeah, no, no, it's great. Yeah, because it is the world, life, it is real. It, it is happening. It may not happen the way we think, 
it does mm -hmm. it may not be mm -hmm. a, a separate entity and we may all be interconnected and it all is all one and maybe it is all an illusion and it's only the mind projecting but whatever it is still a, a human experience that happens to be going yes. on yes. yeah yes and yes. and also that's that's the thing so so we are human beings human beings mm. yes and it seems like mm. we forget about the being part right <laughs> and and but it, it's like we misunderstand a, a lot of things about ourselves and and we see ourselves as in this little body and we're separate and but but it is just beingness boundlessness borderless in actuality and how how do I get to know that for myself, like as an actual experience, you could say, or as an actual that I know myself as being that? Yes. Almost all of us remember knowing that as children. Mm. And then it leaves or gets, you know, traumatized out of us or is not allowed or... But we, we, almost all of us, have some memory of adults are a little bit nuts. Yeah. They're maybe very complex. Really, it's about play and what's happening right now. And, and there's a lot of truth that, that, that is innate to our beingness. And then we live in a world that's all about doing. So we become a human doing. And we live in a society that endorses doing your achievements, what you have attained, who you know, how many followers, what have you achieved, what are you doing with your life, what's your purpose? Wouldn't it be wonderful if your purpose was just to be? Yeah. And I'm even noticing my own language. I'm saying just to be as if there's a reduction in being. Yeah. In fact, there's a richness in being. But it means sacrificing your external achievements, your rewards, being visible, what you've achieved, your credibility, your popularity. None of that is active when you dial into your beingness. None of it. And we tend to be addicted to that external feeding system for our ego to give us more experience to move us away from the present moment and run some chemicals that are exciting and what's next and what's next and what if and where is the drama. Mm -hmm. And all the while that light, simple beingness is waiting, not going anywhere within us all. So we make a choice. Do I dial into the beingness and operate from there? Mm. There's a lot, a, lot of a, a lot that we have to surrender in order to truly live from there. And what we have to surrender is a world that our mind has created and endorsed and given value to. Mm. And that's what's asked of us. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's like all these, all these things we were taught and the culture we grew up in, and it, it makes us so, everything so external and, and puts us object subject in everything daily life That's right. so it's it's uh, it's about not believing that i guess like yes yes not getting juice out of it not puffing ourselves up from it because you still get to play but it's play mm -hmm. it's play yeah however if your sense of self-worth is coming from that play engagement in the world if you need to be approved of. All right, mm, you're kind of hooked into it now. Your beingness doesn't give a crap about whether you're noticed or not, or you're visible or not, or you attain this, or you achieve that, or you're approved of, or so-and-so likes you. Your beingness has no interest in it at all. So, mm -hmm. so shifting your value system into what is authentic, into the baseline of your humanness, your heart opens. There's a softer gaze on the world. 
you will do less. Mm. Somehow more will be achieved. And that's a kind of a weird one. But more will be achieved because a divine efficiency is what moves you on. You will do what has to be done, what's inevitable, what's in your destiny, rather the, than the overlay of the mind saying, I can improve on beingness because I know better, because I think it should be this way. And that's where we waste so much energy. We like, what for? Your beingness is sitting waiting there. And so much of the spiritual path is about doing those things to discover that they're meaningless, mm. to discover that they bring you nowhere, actually. Really, they bring you nowhere. Yeah. Yet so many people are doing that. We are spiritual seekers and and we think we'll find ourselves and it's, it's um, doing this or doing that or this path or this practice and these words and yeah. it's just... Or, yes. yeah so it's it's and none of that is necessary at all because you are already born free right you are already free as it is so yes. why is it so hard to get it you know <laughs> it's it's like why is it so hard for us to understand that we are already what we're looking for right and it's why do you think that is and mm, can we just see through it like, oh, how silly I believe that for so many years. It's like the mind, you know, okay, I don't believe this mind now because that didn't serve me and that didn't make me happy. But this kind of mind uh, can make me happy and serve me. And yeah, I'll find the bliss here and enlightenment. You know, so we, we go from one mind to another mind, but it's still mind. And yeah. the mind cannot, you can never find it in the mind. So it's like, okay. Everything that has to do with the mind is not it. So I don't even have to go there, right? Yes. And that's easier said than done too, right? It is. It is. Some of us have access to the stillness that's underneath the mind activity. And some of us don't have access to it that easily. Some of us don't. And if we don't have access to it, it's like in those situations, somebody would say, I have to like pray for that opening to come and I might or might not have that taste of, oh, there's the stillness underneath all of it. Sometimes that's not open for us. If it is open for you, any of our listeners, spend as much time there as you can. Learn how to drive your car, have a conversation while a chunk of your attention is in that stillness that is deeper than thought. That's a really fruitful thing to do. Mm. And then for people who don't have instant access to it, and I was in that category, it was like, yeah, every now and then there is that stillness. Sure. But there is a lot more pull to doing all these things. I need to have these experiences. I need to work at it. I can't just drop in. In theory, it's there. It's intellectual. But, 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 but authentically, uh, uh, uh. Mm. I'm not in it. I can't melt in it. I can't dissolve in it. And so it's very important for us to know, is it an intellectual understanding or is it a felt sense of my beingness? And when that is the case, we, we got to spin out the experiences to know for ourselves that it's pointless, that, that it's leading nowhere. Now, for me to drop that idea into somebody, they kind of have to chew it until they discover it for themselves. But I think it's of value that we explore this point. Mm -hmm. It's like, it will end not because you found the crock of gold. It will end because you will see it's futile. That's important. Mm -hmm. It will end because it won't be working anymore. And you'll see that it's exhausting. I'm done with it. It's exhausting. The show's over. I got nowhere. It beat me. Let that come. And so often we run from that point of failure and despair. But, you know, hitting the bottom of the barrel in that way, it's like all this seeking in the world. Pff, maybe it was just my mind after all. Yes, 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 yes. It was just your mind. No, this is as good as it gets. No, 
right now. Mm. Don't move. Don't go anywhere. This is as good as it gets. Let the disappointment arise. Let the failure arise. Let these, mm, these feelings that we were running from arise. And it clears into a nothingness. There was nothing to gain. It was all for nothing. There was no enlightenment. I made it. There was no goal. None of those things are actually how it is. The stillness that you're looking for was always there. You're looking from it, looking out to find where you're looking from. But our mind does not like that. No, because it's been running our whole lives, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's like putting the mind at rest. It is yes. a bit like that. Like, okay, relax, mind, relax, relax. You don't have to be in control. You're there to, yeah. to live a life, yes. And we have to function and everything. And, and the mind is great for all that. But I, I guess where the mind is not so beneficial is when it takes ownership of everything that's going on and yes. what's happening. Yes. And we can look at the mind in, in, in two ways, but really we're looking at the brain in terms of, do I pick up my mind and use it for functioning? Or do I pick up my mind and use it to tell me about me? Mm. And so if I run a connection with the world, oh, I'll do this because this is expected of me. I'll do this because they like it, because I want them to like me. And if we start noticing how we pick up our mind and use it to create a nicer me, an accepted me. We've left our true nature of beingness for this mind created version of me, which is completely not what you are at all. Yeah. Never were like put effort into that, but you'll have to do it again in another hour and in another hour and another hour and it never ends. There is never a perfect sense of you because, my goodness, perfection isn't in the realm of mind. Perfection is in the beingness. That's where perfection lives. Lives. Yeah. So, so do we do we use our mind for functioning, or do we use our mind to create a sense of a little me, an ownership, as you say, an ownership of what I do and who I think I am? Drop that. Just drop that practice. Drop it completely. Yeah. Drop it, drop it. It's going nowhere. You're going to drop it sooner or later. The invitation is be done with that. Yeah. See through it. Take a chance. Take a chance that your beingness is enough. It's more than enough. It's a divine expression. It's, it's your fullness of your beingness showing up in a physical form to play. To play at suffering, to play at experiences, to play at the whole lot. Yeah. Let the experiences come. And go, they don't touch what you are. They don't. Yeah. It seems like they do, right? It seems like, oh, this is happening to me. Mm. But but it, it, that's not the truth. No, that's a me story. That's your brain making events about you. Yeah. Yeah, it's the whole memory mechanism. And mm. yeah, it's it's making this whole story about a person that's not even there. I, yes. I like to sometimes also compare, you know, with animals and nature, yes. they don't have that, have that whole overlay or they, they don't have that. It, it, it's just happening for them. Right. Well, we think they don't. Right. Um, yeah. And, and I think, I think the more we, hmm, let's put it like this. And this is the way I see it right now. The more we, domesticate animals if they're learning how to self-reference i think dogs particularly they're learning how to oh, i'm being disapproved of i'm bad like sometimes i really think a dog can feel shame you know and they cower down and tuck their 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 tail between their legs you know and i did something wrong it's like hmm, that's right beside shame like i am wrong i am bad and so the more we domesticate, we're, we're spreading our conditioning into the animal kingdom. But those that are wild and free, I agree with you. They're free. 
sure, we can be jealous of a bird. It's like, look, a bird doesn't leave a, a smoke signal behind it. There's no trail. It's free. There's no imprint. There's no history, no future. It's in the moment being yeah. a bird. Yeah. And it's interesting you mentioned bird because I was just thinking the other day about, you know, when birds are picking it, you see them and they always look around too. And then they, and then they look around making sure no predators are coming. Right. But so I'm thinking, oh, that's the bird's mind kind of, or instinct or whatever, you know, doing the looking around and eating, but it's not saying, oh, I'm a bird and I have to watch out for the bigger birds up there. And it's just automatically yeah. happening that that's what a bird's mind will, you know, to keep it alive. That's right. And that's right. That it's almost like, oh, what if our human minds are like that? We have all these minds and thought stuffs going on all the time to keep us alive, to keep us safe and be able to have a long life. So all that is going on. But that's that's what it's there for. But we 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 make all kinds of stories out of all these thoughts and stuff and we we identify with them and all that. And it's completely illusionary, right? Yes, yes. And so birds, they're, they're interesting, you know, because birds, particularly birds of prey, they have a capacity for their two eyes to focus on different things. So a bird of prey is looking at a field mouse down here with one eye and laser vision can see from a high distance a, a mouse that it's going for. And its other eye is watching around, is watching around. Is there another bird going after the same thing? Am I going to crash here? Mm they have adapted. You know, we're so primitive and we think we are like the most evolved species. Oh my goodness, not at all. Because a, an animal that is a, an animal of prey, you're right, like a bird that pecks around, that eats seeds, okay? And they look up and around. They're not in fight or flight. They're not. No. They're not in, in they don't have PTSD. Mm. They don't accumulate their trauma because they'd never come out <laughs> no. after every shock. But we do, we get phobias, we, we have a car crash and are unable to, you know, be calm when we drive a car for ages or get a fear of, of, you know, of swimming because we almost drown once and we never again want to go into the water and we accumulate our traumas. Mm -hmm. And it's because we haven't evolved our nervous systems to be able to process trauma, let it go and be present with the next moment. What do we do? We pull the memory with us and it overlays the present moment because we've left the present moment. We've left our beingness. We trust our mind more than we trust the beingness. Yeah. So we'll trust what we have learned from a recent trauma to inform us if this is safe or not more than trusting our beingness. Yeah. Like yeah. How primitive is that? Our divine essence. No, my mind knows better because I've been burned here before. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So can we, can we, can we welcome an evolution of our species where we are? Ah, yes, I got hurt there. What was the learning? I'm not going to stay away from everybody that totally represents another potential hurt. Can I take, where was I blind there? Where, where, where's a piece of wisdom? Heal the hurt, be present and say yes to whatever shows up. Yes, suck it to me. I'm not going to filter out things because they're dangerous. I'm fully here, fully saying yes to all of it. Bring it on. Do we have that courage? And sometimes we have to heal trauma in order to let those filter systems go so that we can be in our beingness, which is always present, not auditing for danger. Yeah. Be present and use common sense to protect you. Because do you trust yourself? Do you trust your beingness to be able to walk or change or surrender to what's going on right now? Do you trust your beingness to be able to take care of you? And if you don't trust your beingness, of course you're going to trust your mind as your default. So you get a sense of yourself from your mind because that's what your mind wants to do. I'll tell you who you are. I'll tell you how to reinforce who you think you are. So we can say rest. But if we've got a lot of our fear in our system, a lot of fear in our system, rest doesn't feel too safe. Mm. And that's what happens when 
with people like me, you know, earlier when I was saying there's two categories, some of us can just dial in and there's that stillness that's outside of thought, beautiful. And those of us who can't, who we have to work at it, the key is to, can I trust that my beingness has my back, that my beingness will take care of my body? Can I trust that? And can I trust my common sense to be present, to detect when it's safe and when it's not safe? Otherwise, we need our mind to keep reinventing a safe environment for me to survive. Beingness isn't interested in survival. It takes care of survival. It does it because being, being, hmm, being is kind of immune from a lot of dangers. It's totally immune from any mind story. It's there prior to it. It'll be there after your mind comes and goes. Your sense of beingness. Every night you go to sleep and you don't dream, you're hanging out in beingness and there ain't nothing else going on. So you trust it when your mind stops. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we often go towards addictive substances or something to give us an energy rush or to give like to move away from the present moment because we want to add on to our experience because we need to go into our mind because the beingness somehow our mind thinks it's not enough we want it but in the stillness no it's not enough it's boring i've meditated now i, I enough of that i want to do things it's like ah okay so actually you prefer your mind than beingness huh yeah yeah and I think also because meditation a lot of times is, is like we don't even know really what that is and and but but meditation is I see it as life life is meditation life is just the being the being is meditation and you you don't have to close your eyes and sit on a cushion to be because you already are right so it's it's like it's like I like the openness you talked about you know the open oh, I'm open to life. And that's, then you're fully there, open to life. And that's, that's the meditation. You're fully aware, fully mindful, you could say, without the mind, <laughs> or, you know, with the mind or whatever. But it's, it's like, oh yeah, it's all this stuff they talk about that you experience in meditation. That is, if you're yes. just living life open-heartedly. And again, it's easier said than done. I get that. And and, but, but the thing is, the more we kind of live from that space of our being, yes. the more it seems like it's, the easier it seems to become, right? And it, the, the more it's more like an automatic um, way of being, eventually 24 seven, we yes. are, yeah. Yes, that you're not going to your survival mechanisms. Mm -hmm. that, that you live from a deeper wisdom that's prior and deeper than your mind yeah. and you know for your mind to bow down to it like for your mind to recognize it yeah you know it's already there yes i totally agree with you like it's it, it's already what you are life is about turning the mind in such a way so that the mind recognizes that mm. it's about realizing that it's about recognizing that you are already it but you don't might know it you mightn't recognize it you mightn't trust it you might think that something external is of more value than its beingness yeah keep doing that because eventually you'll discover it's not you'll discover that your mind can't get you there you will discover that because your mind cannot get you there. It's about surrendering the mind. But really what people are looking for is for their mind to realize it. It is the truth that beingness is far more authentic and it's where stillness rests. It's where we can live from a more authentic, integrated, honest place. It's where our humanness shines. There's a softer gaze on the world. There's a gentler way to participate in the world that's more in tune with, with what's natural and organic for us. It's hugely freeing. Yeah. Now, that's all there. Does your mind accept this? Like listeners, as you're listening to this right now, does your mind say, oh, 
I want that. What do I have to do to get it? It's like, you don't have to do anything. It's here. The doing is going to take you away from it. It's here. Now, if your mind is saying next, oh, no, no, it can't be just that. It's like, what if it is just that? What if it is that simple? Oh, but I have all these practices. That's fine. You can do them. They're a great pastime. Mm. And this remains the same as it always was waiting for you. Can you mind see that this beingness is as good as it gets? The searching for it can be a lot of fun and it will spin out. And this exquisite magnificence of what you really are awaits you. Yeah. It's not judging you. It's not impatient. It's going to let you do every bit of running and healing and well it's going to let you have all the experiences in the world you want it's not doing anything it'll wait for you it'll wait for you but hey why not go there now why not go there now yeah yeah we actually go there every night in deep sleep right <laughs> and and when we die when the body dies we go there too but it's like yeah we already do it every day we just yeah we just we're not aware of it you know we are unconscious i guess when we enter and and that's the whole spiritual path is for the mind to recognize it mm -hmm. you know to realize that hey that is what you're looking for actually yeah wow oh thank you so much Dag. that this is such a lovely conversation yeah yeah i enjoyed it too thank you for the opportunity susan yeah and yeah. you're Right. Uh, can you mention your website and events and courses or whatever you offer? Sure. So it's Jack hyphen O'Keefe, just J-A-C. I'm the youngest of six girls. And and when when I was small, Jacqueline was way too, way too long. And so I became Jack very early. And so, you know, I took a spiritual name for a while. I changed my name to Jackie because there was a magazine when I was a teenager called Jackie. Oh. And, you know, yeah. And so much of us reverts to what did I know at the very beginning? What was authentic at the very beginning before I wanted to do better on what was organic, you know, on what was innate. And so I had to return to the name Jack, hence J-A-C, Jack. Okay. So, so that's that circle. So it's Jack hyphen O'Keefe. So there's a, a, a YouTube channel, um, which has a lot of different teachings following advanced to, to, to more of a beginner, a beginner approach and wherever you are, honor where you are, because that's the only place to go. What's yeah. authentic for you? Um, every Sunday, there's something called the Truth Serum Cafe. Um, and it's an online sangha. It's 90 minutes. And we use a chat box and, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, tools on how to bring the essence, the truth of what you are into where the rubber hits the road, into real life situations where we all cultivate a greater awareness of our humanness and where our blind spots are and where our mind might be, you know, still in charge unbeknownst to us. So we do that kind of work um, at the Truth Serum Cafe every Sunday and with time differences people are going to have to log on to the site to, to find the time difference in their zone yeah, um, I, I was on one of them and it was lovely so yeah yeah it's a ah, good, great good. Cafe. You got to it. yeah yeah and then every quarter I do a truth serum retreat so there's one at the end of May uh, May 21 23 and we go very deep on one topic very deep like looking at it from every angle from like all right in my life how does this play and in my beingness how do I see this issue so we look at things from a lot of different angles and that's kind of my approach is like you can look at it from the mind's perspective you can look at it from beingness you can go out to the nothingness and let's not let's not cancel out any lens of perception your magnificence knows that you are the absolute and knows that there is absolutely nothing and all of this is imagined, as well as let's honor your humanness right here, right now, and be in integrity as a person. And all of these things can exist and do exist simultaneously. They don't clash with each other. And that's what my work is about, is about expanding the field of consciousness 
so so that no stone is left unturned so that you walk your talk yeah. um so so the cafe on sundays and a retreat every every quarterly and the two books they're the offerings at the moment you know yeah wow that's that's also plenty oh wow yeah thank you that that's beautiful Yeah. Thank you, Susan, for this opportunity. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. May there be, may there be blessings and love yeah. everywhere.